Have you ever wondered why the wheels on Formula One cars aren't made out of carbon fiber? After all, pretty much everything else on the car is made out of carbon. The bodywork, the suspension, the floor, the brake ducts, the wings, the monocoque, pretty much everything you see is carbon, but not the wheels. I never thought about this until I came across an old Reddit post of somebody asking that very question. There didn't seem to be a solid answer that everyone agreed upon in the comments, and it was something that I wanted to look more into. This is interesting, because if there's one place you could really benefit from losing weight, on a car that is, it's the wheels. This is because wheels are unsprung mass, meaning that their weight isn't supported by the car's suspension. And reducing any unsprung mass on a car can lead to tremendous improvements in acceleration, braking, and overall handling in corners. And it isn't as if wheels haven't been made out of carbon before. In 2015, Ford revealed what would be the first mass-produced carbon fiber wheel ever made. By working closely with a company called Carbon Revolution, they created wheels for the Mustang GT350 that were 60 pounds lighter than their aluminum counterparts. That isn't the same as removing Moving 60 pounds of weight from, say, the interior, 60 pounds of unsprung mass is huge. Koenigsegg had also played a big role in bringing carbon wheels to the markets when they gave way to the Agera, where the spokes and the center part of the wheels were completely hollow, cutting out as much weight as possible. The one-piece wheel had no metal aside from the center cap and the valve stem. Koenigsegg had said that this saved over 40% of the weight of the forged aluminum wheels that they had otherwise been using. And these are wheels that can go in excess of 280 miles per hour. So we know they can be made, we know they can go fast, so why don't we see them in Formula 1? It turns out that the answer is a little complicated because there's a few different reasons. And most of them boil down to safety and money and safety again. Problem number one with carbon fiber wheels is that Formula One is obviously an open-wheeled racing series. It's not at all uncommon for cars to bump wheels or slam into the bodywork of a car next to you because of something like understeer. The wheels and tires and suspension components of a car take a lot of abuse in an open-wheel racing series, much more than say the wheels in NASCAR where they're much more protected. This is a big problem because carbon fiber is a brittle material. Not to say that it isn't incredibly strong, of course it is, but carbon fiber once it gets damaged likes to fail suddenly and explosively. The magnesium alloy wheels that Formula One use now won't fail like this. They'll bend and warp, obviously, but if you touch wheels at 180 miles an hour, you don't have to worry about your wheels disintegrating, which unfortunately is a possibility with a composite design that is much less resilient, even if it has a higher tensile strength. Instead of the wheel bumping off the wall and being fine for the rest of the race, carbon fiber would crack. It would probably be microscopic and visible to the naked eye at first, but it would slowly get worse until it unexpectedly would explode down at the end of the main straight, sending the driver into the wall at 210 miles an hour. This is not ideal. Not to mention having wheels shred apart on a live circuit would also wreak havoc on the cars around it, leaving carbon debris all over the place which loves to eat tires. The brittle nature of composite materials is problem number one, but there is also another issue with the nature of the material, which is heat resistance. Composites don't stand well to extreme heat, and extreme heat is something that the wheels on a Formula 1 car need to be able to deal with as the brakes frequently get above temperatures as high as 700 degrees Celsius, sometimes getting over 1000 degrees Celsius during periods of heavy braking without a lot of opportunity for cooling at circuits like Montreal. These extreme temperatures, paired with the fact that the discs and calipers are incredibly tightly packed inside of the wheels on Formula 1 cars would subject the wheels to more heat than they would be able to handle, leading to severe warping and eventual delamination and subsequent failure of the composite material. Not to mention that even the tires can get hot enough to do damage, often sitting between 100 to 130 degrees Celsius during a race. The big advantage of carbon fiber is its strength to weight ratio, isn't it? This is why most of the fuselage as well as the wings on airliners, for example, are made out of composite material, exceptionally strong and very light but there's a problem. Carbon fiber can, in certain cases, be both stronger and lighter than most alloys and metals, but it's a case-by-case -case basis. It isn't always the best option. But because carbon fiber, as well as other composites, are typically only strong in tension relative to the direction of the weave, using it for an application like a racing wheel where the forces are high, constantly changing and coming from different directions from the constant rotation of the wheel, it isn't really a good option for this application. It's hard, brittle, and only strong in certain directions depending on 
on how it's manufactured. Metals and alloys are perfect for this job because they're homogenous. They can pretty much take constant forces and impacts from any which way and respond in a predictable manner. They also won't fail suddenly and rapidly like composites will. The point is, if you were going to make a wheel for Formula 1 out of carbon, you would have to use so much of it that you probably wouldn't even save that much in terms of weights anyways, which defeats the entire purpose. The wheels on a GT350 or the Agera aren't exposed to the same forces, impacts, and temperatures as wheels in Formula 1 or other racing series. They can work in specific circumstances on road cars or mountain bikes, but the risks and costs to make it work in a racing series are too great for the benefit that you would see. Speaking of cost, not only would the development of a wheel that would work with the current generation of cars and their thin sidewall tires be tremendously expensive, teams also have to bring multiple sets of wheels to the track on any given weekend. It should also be mentioned that it is against the rules in all FIA Motorsport series for teams to use carbon fiber wheels. Of course this is in part due to the reasons that I've gone over, but you need to remember that the wheels aren't even different from team to team. From 2022 onwards, when they switched from the 13 inch rim to the 18 inch rim, the wheels themselves are standardized, all being made by BBS in Germany. All 10 teams have the same wheels, which means that if carbon fiber wheels are advantageous in Formula 1 and everybody has the same advantage, then nobody has the advantage. So taking the risks that are associated with a composite material for something like a wheel just isn't worth it at the end of the day. In the end, it's probably best for carbon wheels to stay on one-off road cars or your mountain bike.